and thank you for watching. On today's video, we have Kenwood's much anticipated DDX 9903S, so stay tuned. All right, so it seems like just yesterday Kenwood was talking about this new radio that they were going to come out with. Yes. Just because yesterday happened to be in January means nothing. It's available, it's here, it's now. So let's unbox this thing and get to it, shall we? Okay. Have the honor, please. Let's see what comes in the box. Papers. You get papers. Yes, you do. An amendment to the instruction manuals and an offer from Sirius XM. You do got three different owners. Three different owner's manuals, a bag of screw, and some extraction tools. Yeah. GPS. Mm-hmm. Antenna. Yep. Microphone. Yep. Two USBs. Yeah, we'll get to those in a couple minutes. Okay. Power plug. Yep. Yeah, trim. trim. The radio itself. Ah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish unwrapping this, uh, get it on the box, and show you what's on the back of this bad boy. Let's take a look at the back. You have your HDMI input, which is buried way up in here. There's a screw on the top and a screw here to remove this piece of metal, and then the HDMI goes all the way in so that uh, it will, well, let's just see, it's, it's about that deep. Okay, you have three RCA pigtails hanging off of it. You have your front camera output, you have your rear, I'm sorry, input, you have your rear camera input, and then you have your video output. Now this is just a video output. The audio output is this eighth inch down here. This is uh, the audio output, so you will need to purchase a eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter in order to use the dual zone audio output. Right below it, you'll see these two guys here. These are for your iDatalink Maestro. This is for your Bluetooth microphone. This is for the GPS antenna. Now this radio does not have GPS built into it, this is merely this is for your smartphones. It's just an extension of your smartphone's GPS so that they don't have to use the GPS antenna built into the smartphone. You can use the one built into the radio. That's just the antenna. There again, no GPS built in. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all the way. You have your FM antenna. You have your uh, preamp output. You have subwoofer, you have front, you have rear. You have a cooling fan. You have your auxiliary. This white plug here is for Kenwood's dual USB setup. They do not use a standard USB behind the radio. They use their own plug, but it does have dual USB. You have the power plug input, and then way over here is your Sirius XM for the SXV300 to plug into. Okay, let's Power it up, turn it around, and take a look at the other side. A couple things about the radio that make this radio special are the... 5 volt preamp output. That's 50 watts by 4. And what type of screen does it have? And they have the capacitive touch. That's right. It is a 6.95, 800 by 480 uh, LCD touch panel. Yeah. Uh, TFT active matrix with that cool capacitive touch touch screen that makes it more vivid, more sharp, more colorful. It's the nicest looking Kenwood screen they've ever had. You have to do Very touchy-feely, yes. very touchy-feely. It also is running a dual core processor running Linux, okay? That basically means this is also the fastest Kenwood that has ever, this thing is fast, which you'll see when we start pressing buttons. It's super fast. All right, so since we're gonna press some buttons, let's press some buttons, let's get through this. All right, here we go. So when you first get to the unit, it's gonna ask you, you gotta go through the startup phase. Now all the way here at the bottom, oh, sorry. All the way here at the bottom is the, we'll just tap here, is the off for demo. We're gonna go ahead and do that because we don't want it to keep switching the demo while we're talking about it. Now, let's go to language. Okay, it comes automatically default for English here in the United States, but you have 21 different languages you can choose from. Kenwood decided that they're only gonna make one box. They're gonna pack it full of stuff. So as you scroll through here, okay, if you see your country's language, you're golden, but there's 21 different languages. There's a bunch. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that. 
we'll go back. Now, the other thing is the clock. Now, you can do what's called GPS sync, which means it's going to automatically sync for your location. So once the GPS antenna pings, it'll automatically go ahead and tell it where it's at, and it'll fix this. Otherwise, you can go in and pick your time zone. This is capable of doing minus 11 or plus 13, so that's 24 hours, so it's capable of hitting every time zone. So no matter where you live, you're pretty much able to pick a time that's close to you. As you can see, there's a ton of them. Okay, so that's really nice. Um, like I said, this is a new universal piece for the whole country. So, uh, you know, cool there. Now we'll get out of that. And we'll go to color. Color is for panel color. That's for these guys down here. You can go ahead and pick what you'd like it to be. All right, you can do user, which means you can go in and adjust it. But we'll do, we'll play with that more in another video. Uh, another big one is camera. Okay, this is cool this year. This will do like we showed you. It'll do a front and a rear camera. Now, when you're setting it up, obviously, now you need a positive trigger for this. This will only do a positive trigger. All right, so you turn it on. You hook up that purple white wire on the back to the uh, reverse light trigger, and it'll go ahead and turn that on. It'll do parking guidelines. You can turn those on and off. You can set up the guidelines just by moving the arrows around. What's really nice here is you have the front camera. When you turn the front camera on, front camera, mirror image. So most cameras are set up to be a rear-facing camera. This one will take any rear-facing camera and turn it to a front-facing camera simply by turning that on. That way it does, it'll flip it. All right, let's get out of here. OME setup, oh, I'm sorry, OEM setup. OEM setup is for if you're doing the iDatalink Maestro. We'll have a video just specifically for that. All right, and then we talked about demo. When we're done, we'll go ahead and select finish. Now, the first thing to come up is the cool disclaimer warning. And before you ask, it will always come up every time you turn on the radio. There's no way to turn this off. There's no way to get away from it. This will always come up. Always. There's not a situation where it won't come up. So there's no hidden menu. There's no back door. There's no anything. If you're driving down the road for an hour, this will stay up until you hit close. Bummer. I know. Okay. So new home screen. Let's talk about the buttons first. So you have your volume up, your volume down. Camera. So this is nice. So if you have a front and rear facing camera, this will allow you from a, a hard key on the face to automatically activate it. Touch the screen in the middle. If you notice right here, it goes from F to R. When you're done, hit it here and it'll go away and get rid of the camera. Menu. Menu's gonna pull up a fast key set to things that it feels you need most of the time. So like your screen adjustment, display off, camera settings, general setup for the radio, as well as your audio and standby. Hit it again, it'll go away. Home button. Home button is going to launch this. So if you're in HD radio, let's say, you go ahead and hit the home button, it's going to bring you back to here. Now home has got a lot of cool features which we'll get to in a second. Then over here you have your... Uh, screen flip I guess is what you could call it when you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay this is going to be the button you're going to press to flip the screen over to that uh, you could also just hit Mary and it'll do the same thing now last but not least you have the eject button so you go ahead and hit it you could tilt the screen up to six positions you can hit open now some of you guys are going to get this, you're going to say there's where your CD, DVD, and then you're going to look inside of it and you're going to see this slot that looks like an SD card. It is, but not for this radio. They're using the same chassis for the GPS system as they are for this radio. So even though it looks like you could put an SD card in there, you cannot. So before you ask, it does not take SD, doesn't do it. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this. So the coolest part of this radio, the thing that everyone has been waiting for, is for two features. Depending on what kind of phone you have is... Andreato and Apple CarPlay. That's right. That's what everyone has been waiting for this radio to do. Now, it does other things too, like it has Bluetooth, and it has dual phone pairing, and it'll do Sirius XM, and it'll play... 
your phone CDs. and it has an HDMI so you can do screen sharing and it'll play CDs and DVDs. It does all that stuff. Yes, we know that. What radio doesn't nowadays? But Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are its primary function. Now, what you have is you have this cool guy here as we showed you on the back. This is the dual USB. Now, everyone always wants to know how long these things are. So we will go ahead and open one. This is it right here. This is all you get. All right, one meter, 3.3 feet, 3.2 feet. This is this is all you have. Now, these are marked. You have one with no marking. And you have one that says iPod, iPhone. The iPod, iPhone is the smartphone cable. That will be for CarPlay and Andreato. Okay, so that's it. That's the cable you want. The other one is just a secondary USB device. Now. The cool thing is, is you can plug hard drives in this year. Uh, I was talking with Seth from uh, Kenwood yesterday okay. when we were going over features that might not be in the instruction manuals, and he had told me that one of his dealers that has had the unit had put up to a two terabyte drive on it, and it read it with no problem. Wow. Yeah, no kidding, right? So, you're saying, whoa, oh, okay. So, basically, it will read NTFS formatted hard drives. That's important. So you can have a hard drive with a boatload of music slapped onto this one. You can have your Android Auto and your Apple CarPlay and or plugged into this one. Perfect world, guys. It's what you've been waiting for. It's the question everyone always asks. How much and how big? Now, keep in mind, you have to organize this music so it makes sense. They don't. So if you're like, you know, if you've got two terabytes worth of music and you're digging through it, you're going to be digging through it. All right, that's that's on you. All right, but it's fast, dual core processor will bang right through it. So that's the only nice thing. So let's plug this thing in and let's take a look at the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. Now, one other thing is this will play high res FLAC files, and there is no down sampling, so it will play the 192K at 24 bit over SD, uh, not SD, sorry, <laughs> I was thinking SD because you just talked about it. Anyway, it will do it over the flash drive, USB thumb drive, stick it into the hole. All right, yeah. and you can do, now, okay, one other thing too is that you can, if you're not going to be doing Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, these are two fully functional USB jacks, okay? So if you've got, like, you just want to have a terabyte of danger over here and you want to plug a thumb drive into this, you can do that too. You know, those, they're two fully functional, okay? And before you ask, no, you cannot plug an expansion into them and do multiples. There's just two, and two is it. Two. Okay, now let's get to the phone fun. For those of you who have been staring at this screen and going, what was that cool mirror button? What is that cool mirror thing? Okay, the mirror thing is really just a really poor choice of words to describe smartphone. It's what it should have said, because that's what it's for. They, how they explained it to me is the, because it's a universal radio, uh, f apparently the term mirroring explains it best is that's the button you're going to use to do things from your phone. Uh, so in this case, now that we have the CarPlay, Apple CarPlay plugged in, it says Apple CarPlay. So we'll go ahead and tap that. For those of you that aren't familiar with Apple CarPlay, it is a feature designed and manufactured by... Apple. Uh, Pioneer has bought rights to it, just like... I said Pioneer. Fuck. Okay, so for those of you who have been staring at the screen and you saw the cool thing that said mirroring and you're like, oh my god, this thing mirrors. Not so much. What it's actually used for is to describe anything done on your phone. So, the generic icon says mirroring. When you plug in the Apple phone, it'll say CarPlay. And in a little bit, when we plug in the Android Auto, it'll say Android Auto. It's really just a placeholder for those two actions. So if we hit it, it'll go ahead and take us to the Apple CarPlay. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Apple CarPlay, this is a software designed and built by Apple that Kenwood has purchased the rights to and given you the ability to use. Now, we'll go ahead and scroll through this real quick. So you see things like iHeartRadio, MLB, CBS Radio, Audible Books, Free Books, NPR, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Sketcher, TuneIn Radio. And then if you go back to the first page, you see things like Maps, 
messages, and music. Now these four or these eight icons right here are the default icons that it comes with that are pre-programmed in your phone. All right, so if you go to phone, she's going to come on and ask you. Uh, over here, these are your favorite contacts. These are your recent contacts. Um, go ahead and hit the home button here. Uh, your music's going to work the same way. It's going to look just like your music. Um, boom. And then if you come over here, GPS, it's going to give you the phone's GPS. Messaging is going to do the same thing. Now playing is going to pull up the music you were listening to last. Uh, music you were listening to last could be anything. It could be any source. Uh, CD, DVD, AUX, um, FM, radio. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever music you were listening to. Uh, podcasts, audiobooks. You get the idea. So what this allows you to do is you can simply press and hold this. Call Fernando Lopez. It's going to use your phone to do it. These are the same icons you're used to seeing on your phone. If you get a text message, a cool little gray box appears on the top here. You get the idea. This is a really cool feature. Now, this does not do YouTube. It doesn't do Netflix. It doesn't do any of that stuff. This is simply made to make your driving experience way easier than it is now by giving you a really nice hands-free interface. Okay, so here's Android Auto. It's in that placeholder. Let's go ahead and press that there. All right, so as you can imagine, the nice thing about this radio, like we had said, it uses that one USB. This will auto-detect. So if you plug an iPhone in, it'll automatically do Apple CarPlay. If you plug an Android phone in, it'll automatically do Android Auto. So you can switch between the two. No, you can't run both at the same time. Okay, so here's Android Auto. Android Auto is very similar to Apple CarPlay. You have your GPS over here. You have your phone bank right there. You have your home screen right here. It creates these cool little tiles. Uh, you have your music services here. If you come over here and tap that, here's some of the songs. If we go back, tap down here. Here's your apps for music. Go ahead and click back up. Hit this button here, return to the Kenwood home screen. Tap it back. We can go back here. Now, these are tiles. What these are going to do is these are going to give you information on what's going on. For example, right now it's partly cloudy. Uh, high of 80 or high of 91 currently at 81 ooh so frigid uh, if you get a text message or a phone message or you have a calendar notification it's all gonna appear here you press this little guy right here call Fernando Lopez she's gonna just like the other service go ahead and call him Fernando Lopez boom okay Go ahead and X out of that. So with her, you can ask her to do the similar things. You can ask her to make a text message, call somebody, uh, play a music service. The two very similar services, find some place that you want to go. And then when you're done, go ahead and come here, return to Kenwood, and you return home to the main home screen. So that's those two cool new services. We'll go ahead and get on with the rest of talking about the radio and all the other sources it has. So when you unplug it, you'll get that mirror. Now, if you plug in the HDMI, that's where you're going to do your cool screen sharing. So, uh, you can plug in an HDMI to MHL connector. You can plug in a mirror, mirror cast dongle. Or if you have an iPhone, you can do the lightning to HDMI. We will have videos on all that, showing you how to do all that. And trying to keep this video in something under an hour, we're going to move on to the next thing. We'll go to the HD radio. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with HD radio, uh, this will HD radio basically means it has simulcast as well as better sound quality it makes AM stations sound like FM and it makes FM stations sound better than before if you notice right here it says HD 1 uh, if there is an HD 2 channel available you can just toggle up and it'll go ahead and get to that now this screen what is it doing up here you have auto 1 auto 2 and auto 3 I'm sorry manual so auto 2 is presets Manual will allow you to go through and tune one station number at a time. Over here is your FM AM presets. It has 15 FM and 5 AM. There's no switching between the two. It's just all right there. If you come over here, this is where all your FM controls will be found. So you can go directly to a station. Alerts and stuff like that are all right there. 
And then this would be reserved for some form of album artwork or playlist or something like that that the station could be broadcasting. Okay, so across the bottom here, you have three sources that it's going to pull up for you. Now if we go back to the main menu here, these are those three sources. So depending on how you're going to rock your life, let's say you're not going to be using the HTML. Let's say you decided you wanted to do Sirius XM. You hold it until the white boxes, and then you drag it up. Now let's say you're not going to do Sirius XM, you're going to do Bluetooth audio. You repeat the same process. Uh, let's say you don't listen to FM. So you can adjust these any way you want, creating the three that you're going to use the most. And then when you go back to the main home screen, they'll have changed to that. So if you come along in here, you hit this, this will take you over to that, this will take you over to that, and launch that. Okay, and you come back here, you can go back to HD radio. Now if you hit the home screen, it's going to take you to the home screen. The home screen is something that Kenwood is very proud of. This is very new this year, this is very revolutionary for them. As you can see rocking right here, we have a big clock, we have a station, we have our three main, we have access to our phone, Bluetooth. Now, since we're talking about Bluetooth real quick, this has dual phone pairing, which means you can have two phones paired at the same time. Now, why would you use that? Well, if you're not going to be using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and you have two people in the car or you have two phones, that would be why. If you're rocking Apple CarPlay, Apple CarPlay negates Bluetooth. And if you're doing Android Auto, you can only use one phone at a time. So this would be so if you're not going to be using one of those two services, you can pair two phones and you can switch between the two phones and have access to either phone anytime you want. Now, if you notice, there's two big arrows here. If you hit the arrow, it'll automatically go to the next feature. Now what this is, is this is a spectrum analyzer that they're giving you. Right now we're not on a station. If you hit it again, a compass is going to come up. Now, this is all it's going to do is spin around. Now where this becomes useful is if you have the iDatalink system hooked up to it, this is where your AC and car controls will be. Uh, look forward to the iDatalink video. Now if you tap here, it's going to automatically take you back to whatever source menu you are on. So if you're listening to an iPod or you're listening to your two terabyte hard drive, if you tap that icon, it'll automatically take you back to the inner workings page. You hit home, it'll automatically take you back to here. Now sources are cool, Android Auto is cool, all that stuff is really nice. But at the heart of this radio is an amazing sound system, meaning the EQ, the time correction, and all that fun stuff. That is what sets this radio apart and makes it simply awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all those cool things that are going to make when you put this in your car, your car sound amazing. So we're going to go ahead and hit menu. And once we're in menu, we're going to hit audio. It's going to launch the audio page. Now what Kenwood likes to do is make folders. This is to make using the unit a little bit easier. So the first folder to come up is speaker and crossover. So when you go in here, Kenwood makes this as easy or as hard as you want it. So if you pick the front speakers, you can come over here, you can pick car type. So let's say for this we have an SUV. Now you can pick speaker size. So let's say it is a Ford and it's a 5x7. And it's going to ask you location. Is it in the lower door or upper door? We're going to say upper dash, no, we're going to say on that upper door area. Now we're going to go to the rears, we're going to do the same thing, oh, too fast, 5 by 7 location on that is the lower door, so we're going to go ahead and leave that, and then we'll say subwoofer, we'll come over here, 10 inch, works good for me. Okay, so you can be done at this point, walk away and call it simple, however, they're not done. What if you have a tweeter? Meaning you have a tweeter mounted up on the dash. What size tweeter do you have? Do you have a small tweeter, a middle tweeter, or a large tweeter? Or no tweeter at all? Make sure you select that. So in this case, we'll say we have a large tweeter. Now we're going to come over here to the crossover. There again, at this point you can be done. If you want to fine tune it, hit crossover. Now you can come over here and you can adjust the crossover. 
So you have a high pass crossover. You have the slope, which is a selectable at 6, 12, 18, or 24 dB. You can turn the system, you can turn it down. So if the front stage is just way too loud, you can turn it down. New and actually fully functional is tweeter gain. Now, a lot of the times when you have a tweeter up high in the dash like that, it is just silly loud. So this isn't really a volume control so much. As you see, it's actually just adding a little bit of uh, volume crossover control to tone the tweeter down a little bit, make it a little smoother. Now you can adjust it all the way down to a negative 6 dB, I'm sorry, 8 dB, uh, as well as you can turn the whole gain down, the whole system down, the same 8 dB. All right, so you can get it, you have a ton of adjustment here to help really smooth out your tweeter. Now you can do the same for the rear, minus the tweeter, and you can do the same for the subwoofer. Let's go back. All right, we'll go back. Now let's move on to the EQ. This has a 13 band EQ. This is new this year. All the Kenwoods now have 13 band EQs, and this one is no different. It has a 13 band EQ. Now, Kenwood has a feature called All Sources or Source Tone Adjust. Preset out of the box is Source Tone Adjust. Source Tone Adjust allows you to make a different EQ setting for each source. That's why it's called Source Tone Adjust. You have presets, and you have four users that you can make. So you have Pop, Easy, Top 40, Jazz, Powerful, Rock, and then four users. Now, if you're one of those guys that doesn't want to go through and set up an EQ for every source, just select All Source. It's going to ask you, are you sure this is what you want to do? Select OK. And now what it'll do is it'll just make your generic EQ setting the same for every source. Go back here. Uh, you have memory, base extension. Base extension allows the subwoofer output to have a deeper, fuller base output than. Uh, so basically, turns these up and doesn't affect the the high side of the EQ. Um, then you have subwoofer volume here, so you can turn the sub up and down. Position and digital time alignment. Okay, so now this unit gives you the ability to do time alignment. And the easiest way to do that is do your listening position. So tell it where you're going to sit. Come over here and select adjust. Now, what adjust allows you to do is adjust the feet that you are away from each speaker. So Kenwood does a really good uh, explanation on this in their owner's manual. We'll have a video that talks about it. Needless to say, you can do time alignment so that you can make the speakers arrive at your head all at the same time. And you also have level control. So not only with that, you can turn up and down the level of each output. Balance and fader, pretty self-explanatory. Volume offset. Now the cool thing about their volume offset is they've gone ahead and put every single source on one page. Volume offset is so that, let's say you're listening to a source, uh, let's say Bluetooth from your phone, and it's not as loud as, let's say, FM, you know, HD radio. This allows you to go in and turn up or turn down each source so that when you switch between them, they all play at the same level. This becomes handy when you're worried about clipping. So for example, if you're doing a DD1 distortion detector and you put it in the CD slot and you set the volume up for that, then you use a Bluetooth and play the same test tones from your phone and it's not clipping, you can go ahead and turn up your phone until getting into clipping. We'll have a separate video on, on the clipping side of things. We just want to make it aware that if you're listening to a phone and it's quiet, this is where you're going to turn it up. Zone control, this is for dual zone. This is for when you're going to do rear seat entertainment. And then sound effects. Sound effects are cool. These are special little things that Kenwood puts in most of their radios to allow you to do all kinds of neat stuff. Uh, bass boost is just that, it's a bass boost. Bass boost puts bass through the whole system. It's not just for subwoofers. Loudness, loudness is great for when you're listening at low volumes. You have two choices, high or low. 
Drive EQ, I'm sorry, Drive Equalizer. Drive Equalizer is designed to reduce road noise. So when you turn it on and off, it'll actively reduce the road noise in the vehicle. And then we have over here, Space Enhancer. Space Enhancer virtually enhances the sound space. So it makes it sound bigger or smaller depending on which one you select. You have Supreme. Supreme is for the disc, the USB, and the iPod. It is designed to restore sounds due to compression. Realizer. Realizer virtually makes the sound more realistic. So it adds like sharpness to the music. And then you have Stage EQ. Stage EQ moves the center of the sound lower or higher. So if you have a bunch of speakers mounted low in your car, you can use Stage EQ to to DSP the sound stage up. And it really works. It's really cool. So those are all the cool sound settings. Okay, so you can see this radio is jam-packed full of stuff and you're going, oh my God, what more could there be? There's a couple more things we're gonna touch on before we wrap that up. A couple just little menu options we wanna show you. So let's take a look at those. So if we come over here and hit the menu button, we're gonna go into setup. In the setup menu, this allows you to go, this is where all the things that you did in the startup menu were that are hidden in the radio. So for example, if you want to get in and adjust the camera, if you didn't do it on startup, this is where it's at. AV, this is what's going to allow you to adjust um, certain times you need to turn on and off Apple CarPlay to do, this is where that's at. Display. Okay, so display. This is where you can adjust the clock, you can adjust your panel color, and you can adjust the background. So here's the six backgrounds. You can import two of your own. So go crazy. We'll have a video on how to do that. All right. Then over here is special, because the radio is special. Maybe you want to turn it on demo. Uh, audio setup memory, audio setup recall. So this radio has a built-in memory. So once you've got this thing all set up and you're, you spent the time to set up your time correction, do an awesome EQ, this is where you're going to go to make it memory. Make it so that it remembers everything you've done. Okay, this is where the software information is. And then down here in the bottom is initialize. We're going to come back to that in a second. Bluetooth. This is where your Bluetooth setup is at. So it will automatically, when you put a phone on, it will auto pair. But if you need to get into it, this is where the Bluetooth stuff is set up. Okay, so back to special. Scroll down. Initialize. So we've played with this radio now for about a half hour. And we've touched it and turned things on and off and went into menus that we probably shouldn't have gone into. And we set all kinds of crazy things and we've paired phones. We want to go back to factory out-of-the-box settings. This is good if your radio is acting funny also. It allows you to bomb the radio back to out-of-the-box settings. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. We're going to step back and let it do its thing. So believe it or not, that's it. I know, right? A lot of information. A lot of information. This thing does a lot of cool stuff. And as usual, we're going to cut this thing up and we're going to do a ton of videos on each feature. This is just the unboxing, people. It's the unboxing probably 25 minutes long. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, hey, as usual, if you like our videos, please subscribe. If you have comments, leave them down below. We'll answer them. I don't sleep at night for multiple reasons. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as usual, like every time, we'll see you later. Bye.